What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fowler, my man, Eric G. Tabor. I uh, hope you all had a good Thursday. It was very uneventful. I did not, I do not touch those kind of ugly showdowns, but Sheets goes out and wins them. Uh, so, so you won it. I know you had to split it up with some people, but that's always fun to, to, to basically make the nuts. Well, you know what? It's, it's, it's partially, I was kind of motivated by, and this, this happens sometimes. That's one of the reasons I do this uh, for the site is that I wasn't going to play. I wasn't going to post anything on there. A couple of people started posting takes on the showdown. I'm like, all right, I'll freaking do the sheets for them. You know what I mean? Like I was, I really wasn't going to. And I figured as long as I'm going to do the sheets, I may as well run, run a build. And as long as I just went and build, I may as well put it in, right? So wait, so I put it in like an hour before lock, and then I just forgot about it because there was, I mean, I was going to do hockey, I was going to do another. And then like 15 minutes to post time, I went and I saw that Kate Cunningham was ruled out. It was probably an hour before that I just didn't even really notice. I'm like, ooh. So I, I actually changed everything. I put it up there, reran everything, got Sadiq Bay in the cap in like 60% of my lineups, and he scored like a thousand fantasy points, and I chopped with a bunch of people. But Doubling your money in the NBA is is no matter how much you're putting in, it's it's worth, it's certainly something to be happy about the last couple of weeks. That that I promise you. Yeah, at least from at least at least in my experience. Um, I saw that you were close in something the other day, maybe. Um, but aside from oh, that, I, I haven't I haven't wasn't I wasn't even close for anything. I mean, I've played one. The, I the last two slates I played, I won a tournament and I did nothing. So okay. I, I haven't had the same the same thing. I just haven't had. I, I literally didn't play at all Monday, Tuesday, and then okay. Saturday, Sunday. So I haven't had much going on with the NBA. That I, I really do think like the the amount of effort. And I know you've been able to hit some weekend ones, but if, if you want to play full slates on the weekend and, and just the amount of people ruled out and then guys who don't try as hard or guys who go out partying and yeah, that's rough. There's just a lot of stuff to try to figure out if you're not a projection based player. And I, right. I, I, you know, I use projections, but I just, right. I don't treat them as, you know, that's, that's not how I build. Um, all right. So let's get into tonight's slate. we got a big one. Let's pull up your screen and we can go game by game. Cause at, at first glance with anything out there, the one thing that I feel very certain of saying at this moment is that there is not an automatic play. There's a lot of guys you can make arguments for, and there's a lot of guys who are thin values that we can get into. Um, guys like Chris Dunn, who I who I did say, you know, keep an eye out for this guy last time. Probably the wrong slate on the 12 gamer, but 3K minimum, and and they made him. Uh, he ended up playing the 28 minutes. So uh, we'll get into those oh, guys. Oh well, you know, and, and he played it the way that you said too, because um, it went into blowout run, and you're like, well, you know, they obviously want to get this guy some minutes, you know. So and they let I think they had let him play that. So yeah. Um, also though. I mean, he's still only 3K, but he also is is, is not like a high usage, you know, Whoa. like type of, type of player. Well, um, but yes it, no. I mean, like, I mean, he's has plenty of 60, 70 fantasy point games in his past or 50, 50 to 70. I mean, for a while there, like he was three or 4K and we were saying, people were saying that about him and he was going out there putting up 35 real life points with 10 assists, you know? So I don't know. I don't remember that. Okay. Yeah, no, Chris Dunn, Chris Dunn was, I mean, this guy was a top, like a top prospect at one point. He is no oh, yeah. defender, but he, um, and that is what he does. But you're, you're thinking of him on teams where he's like playing with four stars, you know what I mean? Like, I so, yeah. you know, when, when, he, when, he, when you're playing in Portland, it's a little different. Um, this Portland team is epically bad. What are your thoughts on the, the first situation? Obviously, you know, Luca Embiid and, and Harden are all worth having a conversation about. Where do you stand on these guys? Yeah. So overall, I have Luca as as uh, well. Let's start with Luca. Um, I have Luca as not the. I have him like ranked like tied for second, third, fourth among the the spend ups. I actually have right now um, Embiid by a very small margin as the top spend up uh, of of the of the of all the spend ups, but it's close. Um, and again, the fun thing to do if you felt like it. Is uh, is play Embiid and Luca in the same lineup, but it's it's so weird, you know. It, it, when, when you have, and this is always the case with Harden when Harden is paired with another guy. Like on the one hand, you don't want to play like when Harden's with another stud. You don't want to play one of them because you're just afraid that the other one's going to just eat up the fantasy points. Yet there there's so many times where that guy does it. You know, like Embiid has smashed with Harden on the floor. You know, yeah. and Harden um, smashed with Embiid too. And Harden, right, right, exactly, has smashed with Embiid on the floor. So I have this weird feeling that that fear and that dynamic, though, keeps both of those guys' ownership somewhat suppressed relative to what they should be. Um, 
I think. Um, so yeah. I, I actually do like Embiid tonight. Um, uh, and I like, uh, I like Luca, And uh, I really don't like much of anything else. Except again, it's the same conversation. You're always getting um, uh, Kleber showing up as kind of like an okay value, and then he just always gets like 12 fantasy points. You know, so so it's um, and uh, Smith is back too to at least steal a few extra minutes, even. Yeah. So oh, wait, so I don't, I, I, I don't know. Oh no, he's in. He's in. Sorry. So I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I, I'm certainly going to consider either Luca or or Embiid. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because how are they going to go with the matchups? Because they'll, they'll, they can use Chris for some minutes. That's not going to work on Embiid. They can use Dwight Powell, who I actually like. I've, I've started to like his game more because I think he's a he's more of a winning player than he is a, a, a good, like, you know, fantasy guy. And every now and then he'll have a decent game. But I, I like, you know, I'm just wondering, like, if, 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 if they force him with some extra minutes here tonight, he could be kind of interesting as well. And I'm sort of open to the Kleba or Powell idea, like, in general – um, I don't think I'm, I'm hoping that we get better value on this slate. It is tough because it's an early game. I usually use Kleba and Powell as my placeholder guys until we get better stuff. Cause usually Dallas plays at five 30 or later or eight 30 or later Eastern. Uh, my thoughts on this game are pretty like, I mean, Luca is, you know, we talk about other guys being tough fades. The guy is going to put up like a ton of fantasy points. Most nights. I don't think it's as good a position as, it, as he was in because you have Dinwiddie and Brunson now. Um, both back, but we just saw, you know, we saw him put up 68 the other day. Certainly that's a nice number. I, I can get behind a, a, a Luca and Harden or Embiid. I, I think that the Harden thing is starting to get to the point where I'm, I'm really intrigued. Um, first of all, it's not like he's, I mean, he's, he's 9,600 and 9,500 on each side. And in his non-existent games or all these games that we're criticizing him for, other than the, 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 the blowout to his old Brooklyn team where he was three for 17, He's still putting up 45 and 50s, you know what I mean? Like pretty much every game. And he's not really having a hardened game. And his at his price, like James Harden for 40 minutes in any match, even in a slow down match against a good defense, I can get behind James Harden a little bit tonight just because the ownership is starting to, the ownership and price are starting to make it like, okay, I don't want to miss out on the 75 from Harden at 96 because I was trying to get the 70 from somebody else at 12 or 11, eight or 11, two or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like he has, he still has the same, the same ceiling as these guys. So I actually think he's a really good, a really good tournament play. Um, you know, running he and Luca is, is not going to be the common way people do it. If they do it together, they're going to play Giannis. I'm sorry. They're going to play uh, 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 and meet on the other side. You know, just to follow, just to follow up uh, on the Dallas uh, Brooklyn game. I spoke about what was going to, you know, about how electric that game was going to be before it happened. And, and, and Luca as, as advertised, just, you know, put up 68 fantasy points and, and the place was electric. And I, who'd even thought that I didn't even think about this. Um, Dinwiddie that revenge. Spencer Dinwiddie would come back to Brooklyn and bury them at the buzzer. That was freaking insane. I mean, that was, uh, that was quite crazy. Insane. Yeah. And it's funny because like, I didn't even play him for DFS, although he had a good, he had a good DFS night. Um, but it was, it wasn't just the, like, the, I mean, his usage has pretty, pretty much been consistent. Like, he's been really, really good in real life with this Dallas team, which I'm, I'm surpri- a little surprised about how good he's been. But, um, yeah, that was pretty wild. I don't, I don't think we can I, – I don't think I, I, we should play him tonight. I, I, I'm fine if people want to get to those guys, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, Memphis-Atlanta should be a fun game. My first thought is this total seems low. Um, it's 237. What is it like? Two, what is it like? Two, what is it like? 280? What is it? Seven and a half. It feels like it could be 250. What is it in the second half? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What happens in the second half of this one? Um, so, you know, this is a, it's the slate is going to be determined in part what, what, what happens with John Morant, whether or not he plays. My guess is that he uh, probably he's, play. he's, he's playing. He's playing. He's playing. My guess is he, he does go. My, I'm more concerned about Trey, by the way. My, I would be much less concerned about Trey because they're, they're desperate to try and get in the playoffs um after the year they had last year and they are currently on the outside looking in and uh, they're, 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 they're both played it's going to be showtime over there that'll be fun. yeah yeah so this is your other what you could do and by the way people are not and, and i actually don't think jaw is a great like just in a vacuum a great play just when you factor in all the guys and similar prices and all that it's a great matchup though and it's really hard to ignore these great matchups he's not going to project well he's not going to look like a good play jaw um but i could get behind i could get behind playing these two guys and I don't think I'm going to, again, I don't think I'm going to end up doing it as a priority. I think I, I would rate Dallas Philly is a little better to do the one V one, but you know, Clint Capella in this game. Um, I think he, I, I'm open to that one. 
I'm open to Bogdanovich. I'm open to a lot of guys. I just don't have a really strong take on who I want. And I'm actually more worried about Gallinari as being the one, because if Gallinari is in, I really like Gallinari. If he's out with, with Collins out as well, we kind of have to boost up Capella, even Hunter, um, and even Bogdanovich a little bit, maybe even Herter as well. So all of that, just, just, just to say, like, it's, I guess it's going to come down to Gallinari for what I really want to do. What are you, what, anything showing up for you? Cause I'm guessing projection wise. No, not hard. really, actually. Yeah. Um, really not a lot. So, you know, absent an injury, I'm, I'm probably not going to play this game. Uh, it should be, I mean, like you said, it could be a fun game, you know, with those two guards going after, you know, going at it, but um, I just think they're better options. Yeah, I, I'm with you, but I but I do think we might want to revisit this one. Like this, this one I'll talk about a lot because I, again, we just you, you just can't beat a great game environment, and you kind of have to like ignore a little bit some of the the pricing and projections in some in my opinion sometimes. That's fair enough. I do think Trey is is the is the preferred of the two though, right? If you had to pick one, just because Memphis has everybody back now. I don't know, man. I mean, <laughs> it depends what what mood he's in. <laughs> Job feels like it. I mean, I don't know. Well, Jaws obviously a better player, but like they're they're they have a complete team, you know. Man, right. Atlanta's terrible. Um, it, I mean, it's it's weird to say that after Atlanta was the who's gonna, who, 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 by the way, not that he oh, no, Atlanta just got who's gonna, who's, gonna, who's gonna guard Jaw? By the way, I messed up and said Atlanta's on the outside looking in. They're on the they're in the last playoffs. They're in the last play in game spot in the ten spot. Um, so they actually probably could afford to rest. Who's gonna guard? I mean, they have. I mean, they can use any of their other wings. It's a good question. I mean, it's like. It probably ends up DeAndre Hunter, is my guess. DeAndre Hunter's a great defender, so he's he's their only like elite defenders. Like you can make an argument for Capella being a good defender, but a Kongu is a good defender, but that's not going to match up. So I, I think it'll end up being a lot of DeAndre Hunter and maybe a little bit of Bogdanovich, who's a little bit underrated defensively, even though he's not good. Um, that's probably the way they do it, and then they probably run a lot of doubles at him with uh, uh, with Trey when he, with Trey guarding him from the outside. Um, but yeah, it's certainly an interesting game. <laughs> you know, I, I, I might revisit this one because I do think there is an argument for the, for the Trey versus Ja thing. Um, and I also think you could even just go play Bogdanovich versus Ja or something like that. I think Bogdanovich could have a big game here as well. So Portland, uh, Brooklyn, this is one of these spot sheets. So what, so I'm guessing the projections are going to love a lot in this game. Um, what 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 do you what do, how are you sort of ranking these guys and start which whatever team you want? Yeah, so I mean I don't know. Uh, it's not really nobody's showing up as that great a play. I mean, my, the top play that I have is is Nick Claxton at thirty four hundred. Um, at you know they're projecting him like six point seven x right now. Um, and as far as points per dollar go, the other guy is the guy that we talked about is uh, is Chris Dunn. Um, at 3K, um, so I have to look a little deeper and see if it's going to be another, you know, another situation where they might, you know, get him extended minutes. And I presume it's going to be a big spread, just because Portland always plays the <laughs> big spread. Um, so I definitely, uh, so that's all I'm really getting as far as values go. And on the other side, though, Durant is just, you know, looks like one of those four, one of those spend ups that I alluded to earlier, when there's a B there's Luca, there's Jokic, and then there's Durant as my top is the top guys for me. And, uh, you know, I have Durant projected for 36 minutes that, 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 that could be, um, that could be ambitious though, given the game environment. I mean, he always does play though. That's the thing. Um, so I don't think he's got upside of those minutes, but he certainly has upside as far as efficiency goes against Portland, I suppose. Um, so I like Durant, but again, you have blowout problems or blowout risks. I shouldn't say problems. You have blowout issues. And then there's those value plays. That's pretty much all I have. Yeah, I think that Drummond is a really good large field tournament play. Um, in addition to, you know, some of the good plays that you did you did mention. Um, I, I think Chris Dunn, I'm open, I'm open to, to gambling here. Uh, one, I think they could get smoked. And he could get minutes that way. I think he could also get minutes in a close game. Uh, they don't have anybody else who can defend except for Josh Hart. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I, I don't know. I don't think these minutes are, 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 are locked in for him by any means. But I do think he's interesting as a tournament play. And um, it sort of takes me out of, off of everybody else on Portland. Um, and, I, you know, Claxton might look like the play to everybody because he's 3,400. And 
Um, and maybe he is, but why wouldn't we, you know, play Drummond at 58 and just take a shot? Like, I mean, he's, he put up 40 in the last game in 21 minutes. This is as cake of a matchup as it could be. His minutes are totally all over the place. Like usually in the 20 range, but he, you know, he played 26 and he, if he plays 26 minutes, I think he probably gets 35 to 45 pretty easily here. <laughs> um, so it's just, it's about speculating on the minutes and, and what they're going to do with him. Um, but I'll take shots there. And I, and I, I like Durant at the ownership he's going to be. It's, it's an interesting question because do we want to play Durant at high ownership in a game with blowout potential? And Kevin Durant, as great as he is, it's not like, you know, as a 10K plus, when you're talking about him at the same price range as Luca and all these guys, even without Kyrie, he's had some games where he's gotten there. But most of the time, to be honest, he really hasn't gotten there. Um, it's not like James Harden. If, none, if James Harden was on this team and no, nobody else was playing, James Harden's going to go out and get 65 to 85 every night pretty much. Durant, it doesn't have to quite work out that way, especially because they've got, they do have Curry there too now. Um, Dragic got priced up to 5K. I think he's kind of interesting. Um, maybe even a better play on Fandle at 48. Not that it's a huge difference, but yeah, there's definitely pieces I want. Right now, I've got Claxton or Drummond. I've got Dragic and I've got Durant as the guys I'm most interested in, but I don't feel like you need to play any of these guys. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, we'll, I guess we'll revisit it at the end of the show. Do you like uh, Curry at all if he plays? I think he's interesting. I, I, I don't know the, the upside with Durant. It's definitely got upside, but like, yeah, he has to shoot the ball really well and he's going to have a little bit of ownership. I think he's okay. I think Curry, Curry, that's a good question. Actually, like Curry, Curry versus Dragic should probably go a little bit more to Curry than he's getting credit for. And Dragic should probably get his numbers projected down a little bit um, because it's almost like they're, they're, they're treating Dragic like he's going to play the same role that he had when Curry was out. And I don't think that's the case. So um, maybe he is a better play at lower ownership than Dragic is, especially because he's got the forward eligibility. All right. Denver and Cleveland. Um well, there's a guy named Nikola Jokic who's going to be low owned. And I just think that's always wrong. And as much as this team has been good against centers, it being the Jared Allen down um, and MB just went nuts against them the other day. Why can't Jokic do the same thing? So I, uh, I kind of like the idea of a little Jokic with uh, Garland on the other side. How about you? Yeah, I, I kind of like the idea of Jokic regardless of whether Garland's on the other side. Um, uh, I, everything that you just said, I mean, Cle with, without, without Jared Allen there, I mean, they, they don't have, not that anybody has real answers for Jokic, but right. Cleveland particularly has very little answers, just as have, they had very little answers for Embiid, which is why I played him too the other day. Mm -hmm. um, so Jokic, uh, you know, rates to be a really, really strong play. Uh, I mean, they still do have the best, def their best defender is not Jared Allen. It's, it's I, I do want to, I just want to make that clear because I'm, I'm such a Mobley guy. I'd be like remiss to not point out that he's a much superior defender to anybody else they have. So yeah, he's just too small. He's too young, I guess. He's, you know, he's 20 years old trying to guard Embiid, but I don't want to make it sound like they have no defense anymore. I just wanted to point that out. Sorry. Um, I mean, to guard Jokic. Um, sorry, she's keep going. I didn't mean to interrupt. You. Oh, no. Um, so I, I definitely like Jokic and I really am not getting to really much of anything. I, I think that Darius Garland, Garland, though, as you you know indicated, is just kind of a play every night. Um, uh, he just, you know, just has that ceiling right now uh, from time to time. So from time to time is good enough in tournaments. <laughs> so, so I think that in Jokic lineups, like you said, you could certainly, you know, be well within your rights to go play. Uh, play Garland. I think, I think that's, um, I think Jokic, you know, can smash with, without Garland performing. Uh, that's, that's just kind of, uh, that was yeah. only my, my only point. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Anything else in Cleveland, anything else in Denver, anything else? Or I mean, Denver? Garland is a really good play. I think he's at 8,500. I mean, we've seen his rate with these guys gone. His usage rate has been incredible. He's had some bad shooting nights and still put up big games. And when he has a good shooting night, he's put up 70, 66, um, 50. I mean, he, he that's a bad shooting night that he put a 50. I think he's got a really good shot at 50 plus. I like him a lot. So that's, yeah. I just want to reemphasize that. I think that you can make an argument for Markin and, and Mobley, but uh, I'm not going to do it. What are your thoughts with uh, your Knicks and Washington? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting to some of this Washington business. I, I guess, uh, Abdia, 3,300, is showing up as a, as a really strong value. And he's also showing up at 20% ownership. Really? Um, 
It always projects like that early on in the day. That I guess. I mean, that was what it was the other day. And then he ended up, I played him in one of the, the 888s. And I think he was like 2% owned or one and a half. Because by Rui, that, other value opens up, you know. Um, you got Rui Hachimura at 3,300 showing up decent value. You got Kispert showing up 3,400 is decent value. Um, and aside from that, uh, not nothing particularly uh earth shattering um and as far as the knicks not not really getting much of anything like randall just kind of a play um i'd probably rather at a similar price maybe probably do tatum or in, in a different game but uh uh i'm uh that's i really don't have much in this game except those three value guys on, on washington but for whatever reason just kind of hoping i don't have to play any of those guys yeah, I, I kind of agree with that, but I don't mind. I actually like Avdia's game. I'll, I'll take some shots there once he gets back to low ownership like he will be later. Although he probably will get a little more because he played well the other night. But we, I mean, come on, we're, we're, we're burying the lead here, Sheets. We get KP back in, in New York. No? No, well, we do, don't we? You know, and-, and, and has, he done any, has he done anything? He's played great every, I mean, he, well, he's, put up, he's put up 40, I mean, he's only playing 25 minutes, but he did have the one twenty-seven minute game against Golden State. If he plays 30 minutes at one of these days, which he will, so one of these days, this would be this could be this would be a nice day to do it. This would seemingly be the day to do yeah. it. So I'm gonna give a little extra edge and a little okay. bump. To, All right. to no one's gonna play him. I'll take a shot there. He's also taken away Kyle Kuzma as like a real fantasy viable threat, which kind of sucks. But I might take some shots on Kuzma at 7K on FanDuel. Um, I just think there's upside at that price, but that's really my only ar- argument for it. I do think Barrett is another is a strong play once again, as well as Randall. And uh, because Burks has a down game, no one wants to play him. Is that is that the deal or two down games? I guess I think he's okay on FanDuel. Um, but I, I think Barrett. Uh, I would go Barrett, Randall, Barrett on eh, Barrett's good on both sides. Uh, Randall's cheaper on FanDuel, um, but I like both of those guys quite a bit. That Barrett Barrett is particularly strong on FanDuel. It, but but I mean, there's a bigger gap with with Randall though, um, isn't there? Well, it's about the same actually. It's eight, no, it's not eight hundred versus nine hundred. Barrett's going to be really popular on Fanduel. Uh, yep. um, like I have, I have a thirty percent right now. I mean, yeah, I'll play Barrett on DraftKings and skip him on Fanduel. That's what happened. Like you know what? The rest of my lineups didn't screw up. That's that's what I did, I did the other day when he uh, he smashed over there. I did a uh, I played him. And that just couldn't get anything from Brandon Williams really going. Um, but uh, uh, and I, that's what I did. I played him on Fanduel, but I also played him on DraftKings, where he was significantly lower owned. And he, hey, he scored. He he did he did well enough. Just he forgot to communicate with the rest of my lineups to to <laughs> up as well. I know that's but, like. But you know what I mean? I'm in. I'm into the. Uh, I'm into Kristoff thing. I mean, he's kind of due to play 30 minutes anyway soon. Why not? Why not let him play it in New York? Yeah, like, I mean, the truth is they could just cake the rest of the season and just, like, forget about it or whatever. But, like, you know what? Yeah, why not? Why not give him a, give him a chance to do a little bit? You're not going to make the playoffs without a miracle run. Um, yeah, I, 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 I could see it. Um, all right. My really painful to watch Lakers in Toronto. This really surprises me to only be in an eight and a half point spread. This smells like a LeBron sitting to me. Um, oh no, sorry, it smells like LeBron playing to me because it's only eight and a half. I don't know what that means for. Oh my god, that's what? What does this world come to? <laughs> no, I mean it's it's crazy, but like you know, they're the better team right now. I mean, they because they, they were just fourteen point underdogs in Minnesota with LeBron. Why are they? The Lakers were fourteen point underdogs in that game. Yeah, I mean Minnesota's been the been the second best team in the NBA. I know, but it's just amazing. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I mean, it's just that's the times we live in. And Minnesota, for whatever reason, absolutely just thrashes this Laker team every time. Did they? Did they end up? Did they? Did they cover Minnesota in that game? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> um, and I didn't. I didn't put it as a bet either. I was like, I'm not touching this one. And, and no, they. No, Minnesota covered. They lost by twenty. Minnesota covered. I thought, I thought you meant the. the yeah, Lakers. You know, I said I meant to Minnesota cover. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I just thought you meant the Lakers. So, okay. yeah. Um. All right. Uh. So. Everybody on Toronto in play as always. Um, their prices are, are kind of interesting. Uh, I kind of like Fred Van Vliet here. I like Fred Van Vliet, especially when he's at home. I know he hasn't put up a big game lately, but I, I really like this price on him. I like the matchup a lot for him. Um, I like, I probably would go Siakam next and Trent. 
and then maybe I would get a tiny bit of exposure to Barnes, but mostly that's the way I would have this rated. And I don't have a lot of interest in LeBron. Um, I think it's fine. Uh, I think Westbrook at 6,600 on FanDuel, maybe you take a shot and just pray because uh, we know that there is some ceiling there, but I, I don't know. It's not, it's not very exciting from the Lakers side. Any interest in Toronto for you? Uh, yeah. Um, I, I like, um, I like Van Vliet. Um, I like playing anybody, not anybody. I, I like playing guys against the Lakers and, you know, Van Vliet's been been injured. And he has been, I mean, he's been either been sitting or sort of playing through it. And the first day that he's feeling better, he's going to just do better. And, 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 you know, if it happens to coincide with a home game against the Lakers, um, I, I, I think I, I think I really like him tonight. And I, w- I would take a shot again uh, with, with, with LeBron as well. Um, uh, I would play both of them together, LeBron and Van Vliet. And I think that's a, I think that's a good play. So you think LeBron is viable over all those other guys we talked about? Only with uh, Van Vliet on the other side. Okay. That's fair. Because, uh, yeah, you want the game to stay close. He's definitely, he definitely rates much lower than all of the guys that we mentioned. Uh, he also, for me, rates much lower than 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 um, than, De- than Dejounte Murray. Yeah, uh, he rates lower than even like Durant. I mean, like he definitely rates lower than them. But yeah, he's still LeBron. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's still LeBron. And and if uh, you know if this and this is one of those if the game stays close, I mean, no, he'll he'll they, they have a chance to win. He'll have the ball in his hands every possession in the fourth quarter. Um, sounds good to me. I don't know. Yep. Um, boy, this next game should be a fun, like scoring one, but the problem is the pricing is making it so we don't necessarily need like want to play everybody, but I kind of want to get some exposure here. What are your sort of first thoughts on the Indiana Houston situation? Yeah. So for me, again, it just depends on who plays because when I rate guys at the early look by points per dollar, I do get Batazzi as the top point per dollar play on the slate. Um, and that's based on 21, 21, 22 minutes. And he's like questionable every game. So, so, uh, and he hasn't played in, in a few, in a few days. Right. Yeah. So we just have to kind of just keep an eye on it and see what's up. Um, if uh, like, if he's out, then, then you, I don't, Oh, Isaiah Jackson's out as well. Yeah. So then I imagine something between Jalen Smith and, and I was supposed to say Tyron Taylor and Terry Taylor, I guess would make sense. So you just got to keep an eye on that. And I kind of agree with you. I'm not really getting to too much. Oh, there's Jalen Smith. That's interesting. Um, on the Houston side, I mean, I mean, no. I mean, I, like you said, I, I do. I would have some some weird interest in in Christian Wood at 7,300, three percent ownership. If that's actually the case, um, just something to do. But um, really, not much. And then there's Brogdon. I mean, Brogdon's not. A terrible play is he i don't know what do you think um yeah i think that they're all like there's a bunch of guys that are fine but they're all priced in a point where it's hard to want to play them what i would say is that if there was a matchup for buddy heel to make eight threes this is the one okay <laughs> something but if duarte is out that would be you, you'd boost him up a little bit he and brogdon 7400 that's rough rough though for buddy Hill, huh? he plays seven million minutes and he basically you know outside of last game is always sort of right around there and hasn't really had that, that awesome shooting performance in a while. Um, if he does, he's going to go nuts. Like, I mean, he's, I mean, this is a really, really bad defensive team that lapses all the time and he's going to end up, my guess is he's going to end up taking 10 threes. And if he makes five of those 10, he's going to take another 10. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just think there's a, there's definitely upside there, but I, I think one of the indie bigs, and one of Brogdon or Heald are definitely interesting. I just don't know if I'm actually going to need to pull the trigger on that price. Um, I do like Kevin Porter Jr. on the other side. Uh, I like Christian Wood as well. I know that the minutes have been a little bit scarce for him, but I don't mind taking a shot on him at this price. I think Porter would be my preferred one, and Wood would be my next guy. Uh, but I, I am interested in both, and have, I'll have even a little more interest in some of these guys, maybe uh, Garrison Matthews again if – even though he wasn't great before, like uh, if Gordon's out, but mostly it's going to be uh, uh, Kevin Porter Jr. or uh, or Christian Wood for me. I, I don't mind the other guys like Green or Tate, but that's just where I'm at right now. Jay or Wood. 
All right. Um, do you want to start uh, talk about OKC in Miami? Because I don't have a whole Yuck. lot. <laughs> Yuck. That's my uh, that's my analysis. Um, not to mention, we got got Shea is questionable. Um, he was questionable the other day and scored 60 fantasy points. Um, I what's the spread of this game? 15. I mean, this is a it's a rough one. <laughs> Uh, so I, I guess you're going to have Butler probably project to be a good play and Bam project to be a good play just because, you know, Oklahoma City is kind of a good target. But how much of these guys are really going to play is the question. But, you know, you want to play the game staying close. You get Shea in the game. You play Shea with Butler. That's something you could do, I suppose. Um, you have P.J. Tucker, as usual, showing up as a good point per dollar play. Um, not exactly the greatest GPP play in the world. and. Uh, Pretty much all I got from this game. Yeah, I, I don't find Jimmy Butler relevant because of with these other guys back. It's just okay. It's really hard for him to get there in a game that also could have blowout, and they don't need him. Like he plays in those games where you really need every bit from him. And and then the problem is he sometimes just guards the guy. And my guess is that he'll end up guarding Shea if he does play. I think this is a reasonable spot for him to rest. If Butler, Caleb Martin, if two of Butler, Caleb Martin, and, and Tucker are out. There's going to be some things to do in this game. Um, but I think that the thing I like the most is maybe taking a long shot on Duncan Robinson. Um, just hoping you can get that, that three point shooting performance, you know, and that's really, really all you're hoping for, but it, there's a chance he could also, you can combine that with maybe he gets the blowout run. So maybe it's a, it's a long shot GPP play, but it's the kind of guy who can, you know, who can get there, but I don't love anything in this game in general. I think if you're going to play anything, it would probably be just play, close your eyes and play Shea because if if it even stays somewhat remotely close, like this guy's been over 49 fantasy points in what, 17 out of 18 games and no one's going to play him. I don't know. Um, obviously there's a ceiling, terrible matchup, obviously, but like who's going to, who else is going to keep it close for him? Um, so maybe you can make an argument for Maladon in this game. I, I'm not, I'm not all that into any of the other guys. I do, I do think Maladon, I guess is, is interesting enough, but uh yeah, I'm not, I'm not especially excited about this game. Uh, all right, another good pace game, New Orleans, San Antonio. What do you got for me? So, you know, it's, it's a lot to spend on two guys, but I, I certainly see the purity in playing with DeJounte Murray, C.J. McCollum lineup. Um, yep. You know, they, 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 DeJounte Murray just performs on a very regular basis nowadays, and C.J. McCollum in this new role um, – you know, has that type of ceiling. And this, like you said, this is a very, this is a very, very fast, fast game. Um, uh, I don't know what the spread is. I presume San Antonio is a, a, a decent favorite. No, I don't know. I, I don't even have it in front of me, but. No, they're I'm a three-point favorite. They're not, they're not, not good. So, so, so it's a close game with two kind of, you know, kind of studs <laughs> against each other. Um, I, I would, I would probably take a shot at this. I, Aside from that, though, um, that's pretty much all I got. But I, I don't, don't discount this. I mean, this is a, I think this is a very, very strong uh, GPP idea. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like McCollum or Joe Val um, on that side, and I'm interested to see what happens with Devontae Graham and Alvarado too, because if either of those guys are out, it's just more for McCollum. Um, cause they have a lot of guys who are pretty passive outside of just shooting, uh, other than McCollum and, and Joe Val. Um, so I, I do like those guys still without Ingram here. Uh, Joe Val's had two, two huge games in his last three and it's not no coincidence without Ingram, a great matchup for him. Sometimes pace gets to him a little bit. So not all, you know, it's always a little bit tricky to figure out. What I would say is that Jackson Hayes is not going to be owned by anybody tonight. And if there was an environment to thrive in, this is a perfect one for him. Um, we just saw him put up 35 against Houston in a similar type of spot. Uh, I think he's got upside here. So I, I actually would include Jackson Hayes into my mix. And as you, as you, as you mentioned earlier, DeJounte Murray is just uh, always a great, always a great spend up. There's just a lot of them tonight. Um, he's a little below the other guys for me, yep. but I think he's, I think you could definitely make a case that he, uh, he belongs at least in consideration with those guys. And uh, finally, we're getting the uh, Keldon Johnson I was expecting at the start of the season. He's really been picking it up. And uh, maybe maybe 6,600 is actually too cheap for him with the way he's been going. Uh, he's had some good matchups in there, but, I mean, this is a good matchup too. 
So I'm open to, to, to maybe keep taking a Keldon Johnson shot, but mostly it's going to be uh, Murray with one of Joe Val or McCollum with some Hayes. Um, all right. Clippers in Utah. Do your thing. Yeah. So this is where all the value should be today. And for whatever reason on early projection runs, if they're not showing up as much as I thought they were going to. So either they're going to be updating projections where these guys are going to be rated higher or, um, or I'm just missing something because I mean, when you have uh, Mitchell out, I mean, that's just, that's just a lot. That's just a lot to go around. Um, and you still have Bogdanovich out as well. So these guys have to, do they just have to do well. <laughs> the the yeah. top rated guy for me right now is, well, from point per dollar is Nicole Alexander Walker at 3,100. And then, I mean, I think all these guys go bear at 7,400. I mean, looks like an extremely strong play. Mike Conley, not, I mean, that's kind of like the most, most obvious, I suppose. Um, he, 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 he's not really projecting all that great, but I, I probably should. And then you get Trent Forrest as kind of a punt. And then you have, I guess, also semi-obvious, I guess, like Jordan Clarkson at 5,800. So then you could always play Royce O'Neal, but I don't know exactly what kind of bump he gets from this. No. I just feel, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I just feel as though, He's supposed to play the play this stuff. His bump is more more has to do with Bogdanovich than anything from Mitchell, actually. Yeah. Mitchell. So 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 and the Clippers, I don't really like too much over there. So um, are these Utah guys eventually going to be projected higher and be huge chalk, or is it, they're just going to yeah. look like just kind of average yeah. players? So they're they're you play one of them basically in all your lineups. I don't. Think. Oh, okay. All right. I'm not missing. All right. Okay. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, you're just playing a complete speculation game if you want to play to kill Alexander Walker or Trent. Oh, Ford. really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, Nikhil Alexander Walker has played 20 minutes one time. He gets mostly a DNP CD for the Jazz. Um, this is a different situation. Don't forget. Keep like, forgetting he's not even on New Orleans anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's a very different situation with a team that's sort of like a well orchestrated. It, it, it's it's going to depend a lot on the starting lineup for me. Um, uh, the you know it's funny because like you know Rudy Gay they raised his price after that just absolutely awful game where he had some pretty decent ownership. At minimum cost on FanDuel, I think maybe you could take a shot on Rudy Gay, but I don't know if I really like that. I, I think it's Clarkson, one of Clarkson or Conley. Um, I like Gobert anyway here, so I'm, I'm happy to make Gobert a, a semi-priority, <laughs> um, but I don't think it's like a huge boost. It's, it's more Bogdanovich also being gone, and also I just I just like Gobert in this matchup, and they might need to play him more minutes uh, because they don't, just because they don't have the other, the other two guys. Um on the other side, it's really hard to find anything that m at first look makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so it would probably just be Marcus Morris and that doesn't even feel great. So I, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with the Clippers, but I definitely will have at least one of Conley or Clarkson right now is my plan in all my lineups on probably both sides. And I, I'll mix in a, the, the Walker play possibly, but the, pro the problem is you get high ownership on a guy who let me, like might play like five minutes and it well, just let me let me let me let me suggest um that that it's not speculative okay so 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 he wasn't getting minutes at all and then you know he gave very very limited minutes and then in the last game he played 22 minutes and i'm, I'm pulling up the the actual game flows and seeing if there was a fluke if anybody was out or whatever it is the fluke was that he made his first three threes Right. So, okay. So, so he came on in for, for, for backup run. Okay. Whatever he played was that like, it looks like 10 minutes and they brought him in the third quarter and then they let him run almost through the fourth, whatever. So my, my point is though, is that he was three for five from three. He had four rebounds. He had two steals. He had 16 real life points and Donovan Mitchell is not playing. You know, I, I, I just, I, I, I just, you know, knowing how, again, biased and, and recency biased coaches are as well, I just find it hard to believe they don't give him a shot, you know, uh, coming off of a really, really good game in, in a situation where they need people on the court. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I think that the, those 20 minutes are pretty, are pretty, pretty secure. Um, I don't know. I don't think they're at all secure, but it's it, there's no reason it has to be him. It could be Trent Forrest. It could be Hernan Gomez. Alongside well, here's the other, that's the other one is the Trent Forrest. Um, I think Hernan Gomez is the better one of all those guys personally. Um, assuming that they they do come out with the same starting lineup that they that they did last time. 
um, starting Wancho at the four because and if they don't start Conley and Clarkson, obviously they start at Akil Alexander Walker. That's one thing, but like they could still play Pascal, who knows the team, who's been a part of the team. They could play um, Trent Forrest, who's been a part of the team all year. Um, obviously Rudy Gay, Whiteside. You don't think that you don't think they want to roll out Rudy Gay for another fantastic performance? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean they're gonna, but they're gonna, but Gay is always gonna play his minutes. Right. Like he's gonna get his normal. Everybody else should have pretty normal run. He's the only one who's you know really you think it's the higher run and and, it, and I'm not saying it won't work out. I'm just saying it's more speculative than just because he happened to do it once. Doesn't mean that's what's going to end up being. That's all I guess that what, what my point was. Um, but I, but I, I hear you. And, and I'm just trying to double check something. Can I double check what happened with Mitchell though, in that last game? Because I actually think that's what happened. That's what happened though. Right. Like I have it right here. No, he, uh, no, he played the whole game, Mitchell. He played 29 minutes. He's 36. No, but he played like his run. You know what I mean? He played like his run, though. I mean, like, oh, okay. He started, then he then he sat, then he came back, then he came out again. I don't know. Then he played like a whole third quarter. Maybe he was hurt. Maybe he was in foul trouble in the first half or something. He did have foul trouble a little bit, but yeah, he only played 28 minutes. But but yeah, I, I hear you. So no, but but, but you're you're right. Your point's taken. I, I did think it's an important point because and I and I again I, part of the other value playing Alexander Walker is you get to wait. You know what I mean? And if he st- if he ends up starting, then he's a great play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So so I, I can get behind Alexander Walker, but I, I just wanted to say that I don't I don't. Yeah, Wancho started the last game, huh? Yeah. And uh, assuming that he does again, I actually think Wancho is in play as well. So sure. But yeah, Wancho and yeah. I mean, I'm look. I'm I'm more just playing devil's advocate of, of trying to find a reason not to play somebody who I think might end up being a lot more popular than he's looking like right now. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I, when I'm looking at these guys, I'm looking at they just kind of look like ordinary plays without too much ownership. I, I have to feel as though that just can't stay stay that way. I'm like, if they announce that Mikael Alexander Walker starting for some reason, you know what they'll I mean? project like eight x nine x. They'll project eight x and be sixty percent on, right? So, right. so you probably won't play. <laughs> yeah. Then, um, then you try. Then you then you go back to the Chris Dunn. <laughs> oh, you can't. You can't because Chris Dunn's or, tra- or Trent Forrest. Yeah, or Trent Forrest. There you go. Um, all right. What are your thoughts on the uh, the Boston Sacramento game? Because boy, a big big boost for Boston here. Yeah, I like both those. I like. I like. Um, I mentioned him earlier. I, I like Tatum at ninety five hundred, and then I like uh, the other good player. I like um, and I like Jalen Brown. I think that that both those guys um, are in a good spot here. So uh, I I would definitely. Um, again, that's that's not. You know, it's a little bit less of a, you know, it's not as big of a spend up, obviously, as, as some of these other guys. And t- not that Tatum is on level with um, the big spend ups, but he certainly has a good game in my environment here. Um, so I actually, I, like, I actually like both those guys. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. I think you prioritize one of those two guys and you play one of them in a good portion of your lineups. That's my plan. Uh, oh, yeah. I really like both of them. I actually like Marcus Smart as well. Um and I like, uh, you know, no, no, Jason Tatum, I'm sorry, not Jason, Robert Williams, like, again, if you just talk about game pace and environment, it's kind of hard not to have some interest in him for me a little bit. I know he hasn't put a big game in a while, like for his price, but I really, I mean, it's so funny because I'm looking at early projections and obviously so take it with a grain of salt. He's projected to be 40% owned what I'm looking at on FanDuel at 6,500 and 5% owned on DraftKings at 6,800. I'll take that shot. You know what I mean? I know he has power forward eligibility, so it helps a little bit, but I, I sort of like him on both sides and uh, I think he's interesting. So I, I'm going to, I'll get some exposure there. It's really hard to want to play guys against Boston with the big downgrade, but if this game stays close, you know, Sabonis is, is his price has come down a little bit. We have Fox with the Q tag, um, which boy, that would open absolutely everything up. Hopefully yeah. we'll know more of that earlier, earlier in the day, but I don't know that we will. Um, so as of right now, though, I, I it's really hard to have too much interest in anything on Sacramento without knowing this the situation, I guess. Um, but I, I do think Sabonis, obviously, if Fox is out, even in a bad matchup, I think you're going to have a hard time not wanting to play at least some of them. Yep. Um, all right, Phoenix and Chicago. There's a lot of good games tonight. I mean, a good like you know decent basketball games. games. Yeah. yeah. Um, we don't have like so many blowouts that we're that we're focusing on. Oh. Ortiz is, is, is going for the birdie right now to try and make the cut. They're going to need it. <laughs> He's one of my 70, my 7,200 guys. Sorry. Um, all right. So Chicago Phoenix, what do you got? Yeah. So on the Chicago side of things, um, 
I, I think that, you know, I think, I think DraftKings is smart. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they, they downgraded these guys a little bit because of the Phoenix matchup uh, as far as price goes. Um, so you, one way to look at it is you're, you're, they're in tougher matches, but you're getting them kind of cheap. Like you're getting, you're getting Vooch at 8,100. You're getting DeRozan at a reduced rate of 9K. Even, even, even Levine, who hasn't really done too much uh, for me recently, he's only 7,700. Um, maybe all that's for good reason, but uh, they are cheaper than they usually are because of the matchup. Uh, and then on the other side, you got, you know, once again, we've been saying it every game, but as long as Chris Paul is on the bench or is hurt or whatever, and Devin Booker is under 10 K, I mean, he's uh, probably worth playing and uh, he's 9,100. <laughs> uh, it's a competitive game. Uh, this could be a preview of something who knows one of these days. Um, and this is the only time I think they're playing right at Phoenix. So they're probably one of two times these teams play this year. It's a pretty, pretty good game. Mm-hmm. And I think that Booker's going to be, uh, Booker's going to be relied upon to do a lot. So I, I actually like Booker a lot in this game. Love Booker. Uh, I think he's my favorite play on the slate. I, I just think he, I mean, we, we've got to start talking about him being misprojected, right? Like, he had the the one game below 50 fantasy points in the situation. And it's not like he played his absolute best or did everything perfectly or that there wasn't the blowout in New Orleans that only, you know, he would have had probably 70 in that game. Um, I, I really like Booker. <laughs> like I'm, I'm very high on this play. I think you could make even an argument on the same side for, for Aiton, but I don't, I don't like, like it as much, but I do like the idea of trying to, to backload your lineups if you can, because There is, you know, we're going to find some information like De'Aaron Fox is out. That's going to change everything. So the more you can have later on, again, always better on these slates. So I and then I have one of the uh, one of the bowls as a as a priority that I that I I want to get to one of these guys. At first glance, I think DeRozan is my favorite, but I really like the idea of playing low on Vooch and low low on Levine. And I mean, Levine did just put up 53 the other night. Like um, he's put up, you know, 50 over twice. He's put twice in his last five. He's put up 40 or more in, or th- like 38 or more in, in all but one, of, what, six out of seven. That's, you know, reasonable for his price. And we know there's always upside for him. So I, I think that all those guys are really good. And that, that's the way I'm going to sort of prioritize the slate. Like, I mean, looking through all my, my favorite plays and everything, it's going to be these later, these later guys, like one of Conley or Mitchell, probably in every, uh, did I say that Conley, not Conley or Mitchell, Conley or uh, Clarkson. In all my lineup, and and at the moment, all my lineups depends on what else opens up. Um, one of Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum, or you can maybe throw Marcus Smart and Robert Williams in there, but I think Tatum or Brown are the priorities. Booker is a priority. One of Levine, Vooch, or Didia or Demar Derozan, and th- th- those are sort of my main my main priorities. The other guys I really like on this slate. I mentioned all the the New Orleans the situation. Joe Val, McCollum, Hayes. Um, and then Murray on the other side, Indy Biggs, depending on who plays, RJ Barrett or Randall. Um, I, I sort of like the idea of the Randall on FanDuel or Barrett on DraftKings kind of a thing, um, just because I like to be, con- you know, different. Um, Chris Sops, I, I'm going to have to do it. You know, I'm playing yeah. three big lineups. He's probably going to end up in one of them. Because mm-hmm. um, the thing about him is all it takes is he just, what do you think it's hot? You know what I mean, too? Like, he has that – He it's not like he couldn't be in play anyway in this situation. Um, yep. Jokic, Durant – this is a, that's the tough part, is Jokic, Durant, Embiid, Luka, and then you could throw in Harden if you want to. Those guys are all really close for me. Maybe what I do, though, is do, do the Tatum, Booker, the guys just under 10K thing. Um, and that's, that's probably what I'm leaning a little bit more towards. I do like Trey and Ja, too, so – it's, it's just going to be hard for me to double spend up on the early games without knowing what value we're going to have later. So I'll have to be really speculative on the value that I do take in those lineups. But I do think that that Memphis game environment in, in, with, with Atlanta, along with the uh, uh, San Antonio game environment and the Houston game environment, I just think I'm going to want to try to find pieces to pick out. So maybe we'll get some injury news that will open up some stuff there because th- these are really, really good games to target and all games that could be in the 250s or 260s are obviously good games to target. So I want to try and get exposure there. Unfortunately, Mr. Ortiz was not able to. I know. It's not necessarily over for him, by the way. You think minus one has a chance? Very, very small, like 5% maybe. <laughs> Better than zero. 
Better than zero. Um, that was frustrating. He missed so many of them today too. It was like, and I just happened to have it on in the background. I was, was it's just, one of those things though, that if it's minus one, it's because you, it's other guys that we have later are going to be struggling probably. <laughs> I know. And they're probably going to struggle later though too, yeah. but, but that's all right though. Cause I, I built most of my lines based on that. So I play, I have a lot of guys on the early, early part of oh, it. Right. Yeah. And I, my Adam Svensson, at least my other 7,200 guys have, have come along nicely for me. Adam Svensson as uh, five under. Me, 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 me got through. Uh, Mito, what did he end up at three under? Yeah. Yeah. Three under, which is fine. Um, yeah. So all the 7,200 guys, except for, except for Ortiz, which is fine. Cause I literally just rotated. I have like two of them, at least in every lineup, three of them in a ton of lineups. And I just was rotating, but mostly playing the other ones. Ortiz was just my one really, really. It's going to be, it's gonna be tough. A lot of the chalk and a lot of everybody's getting there, you know, six or six isn't going to do anything for you now, this week. It's weird. <laughs> it's like, well, but, um, yeah, you're right. You're right at the moment, but we'll see what happens with these. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I do like some of the guys I have, you know, the, the Fleetwood and, and our, our, our guy Webb Web came, you know, had a big day. Yeah. Adwin was really popular, but, you know, yeah. just some good stuff. I didn't have any Scott Stallings, so I missed on, I missed on that one. That's what I do now. I try to see if I have any. Nope, no Stallings. I hand build, so I don't even need to look. On that one. I only play, I only, I didn't play as many this week. I, I uh, did, I did something different. Yeah. Um, but okay. Um, oh, yeah. Floppy Hat guy's doing well. The, the, Damon. Oh, so never, never I, I, like nine, I like nine percent of that. Oh no, he's, oh, he's minus five. All right, guys. Well, good luck tonight. Um, I'll be with you live at five forty-five Eastern. I'm guessing we don't have sheets tonight. I believe that's the case. Okay. And if we get a lucky su surprise sheets appearance, that'd be great. If not, I'll see you at two forty-five for at least a half hour, and uh, we'll go through everything. Guys, let's crush it tonight. Check out the site. We're still making some changes. Remember, add it in the True DFS support channel. Uh, we always want to hear back from you and always like and like the videos. We really appreciate it. And uh, let's make some money tonight, everybody. Good and luck. again, again, for, for me, watch watch for all kinds of weird sports and stuff coming in on the weekends. We got a lot of stuff. Uh, okay. MMA did the video already. MMA his projections are up. I'll we'll do all the uh, NASCAR and 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 LOL and and everything else going on this weekend. I'll do my best to get projections going too. And, uh, but let's, let's celebrate a Bobby victory tonight. Hopefully. And uh, for the weekend, just want to say, we will have Rody starting to do some, some weekend stuff for us. Uh, oh, God bless baseball start. So it's going to, it's going to help out a little bit because we're trying, I'm trying to balance having a, a social life and then uh, trying to do it on the weekend. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to do this for me. So I'd like to have at least one of those days off, but Rody will be available and we'll, we'll have more stuff for you guys then. So good luck everybody tonight. Uh, hopefully we'll see one of you at the top of leaderboards.